I had no idea, but dragon fruits have a couple crazy secrets. They only take one year to grow and it all happens on just one night in the summer on the cactus plant. I had to find out if this was true. So two years ago, I got my hands dirty with my first dragon fruit. I thought, if dragon fruit cacti can bear fruit for 30 years, commitment here is well worth it. And this is a success story, so buckle up because you're in for a surprise. So, if you remember, the first step to becoming a dragon mommy, or daddy in some of your cases, was to cut open this juicy dragon fruit and reveal the tiny inner seed. I extracted the seeds with a utensil, a method not as easy as I later learned, and I'll for sure show you that method later, and I got them on a piece of damp paper towel to germinate. Not Germany, but germinate. I sealed the paper towel in a little baggie, you can also use a glass jar, and the hardest part came, waiting. I waited seven days, and soon enough, the little tails started to sprout out the little bum of the seed. And well, if you didn't know, dragon fruit seeds grow into cacti, and this was a fact that blew my mind. Well, slowly but surely, they continued to sprout up and morph into baby cactus plants, and soon they were ready for a repotting. I took my time and did it diligently and responsibly, and a few months passed. I really felt like a very proud dragon mother because the little baby dragon started to sprout so much so that they were turning into baby cactus and it's safe to say that I was very excited. I repotted them when they needed repotting and soon enough, the cacti became bigger and they were getting into their teenage years. I was a little confused because they started to shrink up, so you know what I had to do. I got my grow box and I attempted to rescue these little baby dragons. Dragon mom hood was off to a rocky start. They seemed like they were starting to grow back and once they were big enough, I thought, okay, it's time to replant these and since it is summer outside, it's time to put them outside with the summer heat and sun. But weeks passed and again, they just started to shrink up. The cacti holds water in the body of the plant. I made sure I was not overwatering the plant and it was getting loads of sun, but it just was not enough. My child was dramatic. I was doing my best to revive them. And at this point in time, I figured I would get them back in my grow box and give them a chance to grow back again. I also planted more dragon fruit seedlings into the same pot, hoping more babies would grow because I had these little baby seedlings on hand. But if you know anything about me and my channel, I was a little upset because our dragon fruit was not looking like what I thought it would in my head this a beauty instead i was a bad mom but you know what i persevered i fight and i was not happy with these results so i ran to the grocery store i sprinted in fact and got my hands on dragon fruit number two after all i was very determined to become a dragon mommy and grow my own dragon fruit on one night of the sun i really wanted it to look like this dragon fruit plant right here now, whenever I go to any party, I always make sure that the cactus at the party never spikes my drink. I know you loved that grandpa joke, but dragon fruit too was here and juicy as ever. I cut it open to reveal the hundreds of tiny inner baby seeds and I grabbed a utensil to remove some of them. I also scooped some fruit out, got it on a piece of damp paper towel because I figured out an easier way to extract the seeds instead of removing them one by one. This is one of the new ways I learned that you can also try at home. Just grab a few pieces of paper towel, layer them up, and add your fruit right on top. Squeeze the paper towel ever so gently until you see the seeds pop out right from the other end of the paper towel. This method made it a lot easier to extract the seeds rather than sitting there for an hour extracting them one by one with a utensil. But once the seeds squirted out of the paper towel, I just wiped them on a new paper towel and they were ready to be rolled up and housed in a little baggie to sprout baby tails. But you know me, I like to do it in orderly fashion. So I still extracted them one by one onto a new one. It's more fun for me that way. You know, my ADHD. But your seeds, your choice. What I love about dragon fruits though is that they sprout tails so quickly and in just seven days, my little children started to grow taller and taller and this time I was not gonna mess it up. I stuck the little seedlings right inside my grow box and I felt confident that these would grow. The waiting game begun yet again and I patiently watched them get bigger and bigger until they were ready to be repotted into their own little separate pots. Here's where I got nervous though because I didn't want to make the same mistake as I did with the other ones and take them away from the grow box too soon but the summer was here so I figured let's bring them outside and carefully watch over them. You can't keep your children inside forever. 
But here ye, a few months passed, and this is what they started to look like. But do not fret. I did not throw them out. I kept them and I put them back in my grow box, but it was getting a little overcrowded in there. And at the end of the day, when all was said and done, your plant lady was just not satisfied with these results. And by now, around a year had passed, and I was upset because I could have had my dragon fruits by now already with my nocturnal pollinators of bats and moths. But if you remember, I'm from Canada, and the winter in the great north is harsh. So I had to bring them inside regardless of them looking like they were dying anyway because they couldn't survive outside any longer. But the dragon fruits just weren't looking like the image that I had in my head of what they would look like by now. This. So I slow walked to the grocery store. Oh, who am I kidding? I damn near well sprinted. And I got dragon fruit number three. Well, ladies and gents, I can confirm that it only takes $5 to grow your own dragon fruits. Well, now like 10 because the prices at the grocery stores are insanity, but that is okay because they bear fruit for 30 years, so it is worth it. This time, I learned some valuable things that can help you with your dragon fruit children too. You can actually peel the skin right off your dragon fruit instead of cut it. But I also learned that there's another way that you can extract the seeds from the dragon fruits to make it a lot easier as a dragon mommy or daddy. Yes, you can take three hours and use a utensil to extract them one by one, but you can also just dab the fruit directly on the paper towel. I near well knocked my head over because this was, it just seemed so obvious, but this method made it a lot easier to extract the seeds and is now my new preferred method of doing so. But before we got ready to germinate them, of course, I had to taste the dragon fruit, which might I mention that if you think dragon fruits taste like nothing, then try the yellow ones because those are the best varieties and they taste very sweet, unlike the one that I tried here, the white dragon fruit. But then the time was right to get the seeds on a piece of damp paper towel. I did mine in orderly fashion, but of course you can just dab them and fold the paper towel right up and seal that in a little baggie or glass jar. But after just seven days, of course, you already know, they started to sprout little baby tails. So I planted those in some soil and yet again waited. And while I was waiting, I got a little impatient and kind of disappointed because I really wanted to grow my own cactus that blooms for one night per fruit cycle. And by the way, if you didn't know, the cactus plants that dragon fruits grow on can flower in only one year, which we all well know and learned, which means that the fruit grows out of those flowers on only one evening per summer when the bats and the moths come to drink the delicious pollen from the flowers and they transfer this pollen from flower to flower so that the fruits grow on just that one night of the year. And the plants can even live in pots indoors, but just know that those can take two to three years to bear fruit rather than just one if you're keeping them inside. So you already know it, I got my hands on another dragon fruit. But this time, I wanted to try growing a yellow dragon fruit because I heard the seeds are thicker and hardier and the fruit grows faster than any other variety. So I got to work. You already know that I try these things so that you can do it successfully the first time around rather than like the 10th. But of course, I peeled the fruit open, used all the new methods of peeling and extraction, and I got the big, fat, juicy seeds on a damp piece of paper towel to Germany. I, I mean Germany. I sealed that in a little baggie, you know the drill, and once a week passed, they grew their little thick tails. Dragon Mommy decided that it was time to plant these suckers in soil. And while I gave those some time to grow in their new homes, I'm sorry, I got impatient. I got my hands on another yellow dragon fruit, just in case I messed this one up too. And boy, am I excited to tell you about this one because it might be my favorite. That's because this one grew real nice. You already know what I did. I peeled the dragon fruit skin right off the fruit, extracted the seeds on a damp piece of paper towel, waited for the tails to grow, and once they did, I planted them in soil. Write a song about that. <laughs> well, I actually forgot about these seeds for three months and I opened them to see that they were definitely ready to be transplanted into soil. So I got my pot, threw the seeds in, paper towel and all, and the waiting game yet again begun. When they were little bite-sized, I thought I would put them in my grow box to give them a better chance at survival because I was also nervous about the squirrels coming and feasting on our dragon babies for their families of 17 because on this channel we do have a squirrel problem which you should be very familiar with. So. Anywho, you know what I did after they got big enough? I repotted them into their new homes, but I kept them in the grow box and I left the grow box outside and guess what? It worked. They were ready for a final repotting and lucky for us Canadians, <clears throat> winter was just about here and we were just in time to bring it inside. 
Before it came inside though, I had to remove all the bugs first, so I got some dish soap and some water and I washed the roots thoroughly to kill off any insects or bugs. Didn't want those crawling around inside and infecting my other plants. But if you're ever bringing an outdoor plant inside, you can do this too to rid the pests and bugs from your roots and soil. Just make sure to also look on your leaves for any aphids or sticky substances, which likely means you got little white mealybugs. But our yellow dragon fruit was finally ready and my god, did she look beautiful? B-E-A-U-tiful. I also got some cacti in my fingers. I had to prick that out. It was kind of fun, a little painful, but nonetheless, a whole year passed. And this is currently what our yellow dragon fruit looks like. I keep her inside because she's a darn well beauty. She's a model. She's starting to turn woody. That's a, a very great sign. But remember, I am keeping them inside and that automatically means the growth is slower so we will not get fruits until about another year or so past. That's okay though because I got another dragon fruit. Actually, it's a cactus pear and they grow very thick cactus pads So I thought these would have a great chance at surviving at least better than the purple dragon fruit and as good as the yellow one You know the drill I grabbed the fruit peeled it open extracted the seeds and got them ready for germination But this time I placed some of the seeds in water and used the floating seed test to see which seeds would grow or not The ones that sink grow and the ones that float are not viable to grow. You should use this with your seeds, too It looked like we got mostly stinkers which was a great sign so I took those seeds placed them on a piece of damp paper towel to Germany well actually I used toilet paper because I ran out of paper towel and it worked very well too just in case anyone was wondering if you can use toilet paper to germinate seeds instead of paper towel but anywho I did the deed waited a few weeks and the little seeds started to grow baby tails dragon mommy was a success and once the tails grew big enough I planted them in soil I left these cactus bear plants outside which I was nervous about but it's a good thing that I did because these things just kept on sprouting and more kept on growing I felt like the best dragon mommy ever once they grew big enough it was already almost the end of that next summer a lot of time passed so I decided I had to bring them inside to live with the yellow dragon fruit cactus babies so I separated all the seedlings and once they outgrew their pots I rehoused them all together in their new and final home Currently, they're doing very well, parent-teacher conference style. One of them died and turned mushy though. It's not very well behaved. I'm not sure why, since I'm not overwatering it, but we're still cooking. I hope they end up looking like this. But speaking of cooking, during this time, I was on a hike and ended up finding something crazy. The mother cactus pear plant with some fallen cactus on the side of a mountain. <laughs> crazy, right? So you know what I had to do. I took the cactus, thank nature for gifting me with one, and I took it home to cook it. Here's photo evidence of me with the fallen cactus pad, so it is in fact confirmed that I would not indeed ever rip a piece of nature off of their natural home. I like to let nature take its course and allow it to gift me along the way because they provide very precious gifts. You should see my tomatoes and pumpkins and cauliflowers and edamames, etc. While you already know, I sprinted home, planted one in the ground to give life, and brought the other one to the kitchen to cook for the first time in my life. I was excited. Now, I've heard a lot of cool things about cooking this cactus pad, so I was very excited to give it a try. But my favorite thing about the prickly pear cactus plant is that it's actually used as a natural fence to keep livestock and wildlife out of crops or gardens. But these pads are actually called nopales. I really hope I pronounced that right. Correct me in the comments if I didn't. But they've been part of traditional Mexican cuisine for thousands of years. And they're now pretty popular in many parts of the world as a great addition to a healthy diet. The pads apparently have a slightly tart, sweet taste and a slimy texture that I was about to find out if that was true. And they can even be eaten raw or cooked in a variety of dishes, including but not limited to salads, tacos, and soups. And the sap from the pads is even said to be used as a hair mask to help strengthen your roots, which I thought was pretty awesome. Plus, it's even used as a natural dye for leather, which is really cool. In traditional medicine, these cactus pads have been used to treat a variety of ailments like inflammation, diabetes, high cholesterol. So it's safe to say that they are amazing plants because they require little water and they can be grown in areas where other crops may not be as lucky to thrive. It's quite safe to say we love nopales, but I was a little nervous that I was about to cook these things because I really wanted to do it right. I did not know the first thing I needed to do to get started here, but all I knew was that this thing was S-H-A-R-P sharp. 
It was really difficult to cut into this, but I cut it up as best that I could. It was really slippery. I was already really nervous to try this, but also very excited. Anywho, after I spent some time carefully cutting it up, there was a little root left over that I planted back in the soil to see if it could grow back. Remember, give life, extend life. And I headed to the kitchen to cook all of this up. I cut it up into really small chunks and I covered them with salt. I let them sit there for 15 minutes and then I washed those off with water. Similar to potatoes, the salt helps bring the moisture in the cactus to the surface, helping dry the fruit out a bit before cooking them on the frying pan. So after I washed them off, then I added some seasonings and got them ready to start to fry. I figured I'm a noob here, so I would just fry them and see what happens. Did the deed, they were done, got them on a plate, and the moment of truth was here, the ultimate taste test. I put some salt, some other flavorings. I just really wanted to try the natural flavor of the fruit to see what it was all about, but I was finally ready to try it. Dun, dun, dun. At first, it was good. But then the aftertaste was slimy. And I don't do well with slimy things, so I think I changed my mind. <laughs> However, I think if I cooked these properly or added them at least into a salad or some tacos, it would have worked and tasted a lot better. I feel like these would be insanely good prepared with huitlacoche, a corn fungus that is incredibly tasty. But before I could stop buying dragon fruits and cactus pears, I really wanted to open a pink one to see what it looked like since I never saw a pink cactus pear before. And I wanted to show you guys too because I thought it's really cool. It bleeds red and it tastes pretty good. There's just a lot of seeds to work around. That's the only downfall. But I'm really hoping that soon our cactus pear plants will look like this and be full fruiting with the help of some bats and moths. <laughs> so, guys, five purple dragon fruits, two yellow dragon fruits, a few cactus pears, and a mean cactus pad for dinner. I finally found out that although it probably is true that dragon fruits can grow in one year, it's gonna take longer if you're trying to grow them in a climate like Canada or if you have your plants indoors. Listen, if you have a full-blown piece of land ready to go, you're lucky and you probably will be able to grow them a lot quicker than I was, but I'm still so thankful that I went on this dragon fruit and cactus pear journey because I learned a lot and I hope you did too. So now we await for our dragon fruits and cactus pears to sprout about on our little plants growing in the corner of my home in the deep, harsh winters of Canadia. So till next time where we take the seeds from exotic fruits and grow them into full-blown house plants that fruit. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you try this at home and keep me updated on your little plants because I love watching your cactus journeys too. Don't forget to like, comment, follow, subscribe. Remember that I love you. And I'll see you next week.